Hello friends, I am Rajanisha Chandran. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this particular video, we are going to study about the lines which are perpendicular to one of the reference planes and parallel to the other. So before coming to this video, you just need to watch the pro my previous two videos. In the first video, you will get an introduction to the lines and in the second video, you will get uh, an introduction to the lines, introduction to the projections of lines parallel to both HP and VP. Then only, you will be able to understand projection of lines perpendicular to one of the reference planes and parallel to the other. Now, see, this is VP or myself is VP and this is HP. This is a line which is perpendicular to, now it is perpendicular to HP, right? See, this is a line, now it is perpendicular to VP. Now this line is a perpendicular to VP. See, this is a line and you can see that now this line is not perpendicular to VP. Why? Because when you are observing from there, you can see this line. You can see this point and you can see this point. I am slowly slowly making this line downwards and now you can see that this point and this point coincides as a single point. You are observing this line as a single point which is perpendicular to VP. So at this moment, we can say that this line is perpendicular to VP. Whenever this line is becoming perpendicular to VP, this line becomes parallel to HP. See, when this line is perpendicular to VP, automatically it will come parallel to HP. So, you can see that when a line is perpendicular to one of the reference planes, the projection of the line on that plane will become a point and the projection of the line on the opposite plane will have a true length and a perpendicular to x y. Do you understand? See, now you are observing. Now the line is perpendicular to VP and you can see that these two points coincide as a single point. So when a line is perpendicular to one of the reference planes, the projection of the line on that plane becomes a point. And I have already told that when this line is perpendicular to VP, it will become parallel to HP. See, you also know that when a line is parallel to one of the reference planes, the projection of the line on that plane will show true length, right? So, now it is perpendicular to VP. So, in the front view, you can see, a uh, see this projection as a point. So, both the point A and B coincides as a point. So, A dash, B dash. And in the top view, since the line is parallel to HP, in the top view, you can see the true length. Now, what will be your top view? This will be your top view, right? This will be your top view. That top view will be perpendicular to the XY line. If this is XY line, the top view will be perpendicular to the x y line. So, how can we attack all these things as a single rule? The rule is, or the rule says, when a line is perpendicular to one of the reference planes, the projection of the line on that plane will be a point and the projection of the line on the opposite plane will be a line perpendicular to x y showing the true length. We can expand this rule when a line is perpendicular to VP, the projection of the line on VP or the front view will be a point and the top view or the projection of the line on HP will be a line perpendicular to XY showing the true length. When a line is perpendicular to HP, the projection of the line on HP or the top view will be a point and the projection of the line on VP or the front view will be a line perpendicular to XY line showing the true length. This is the rule for the projection of lines perpendicular to one of the reference planes and parallel to the other. Actually, when a line is, uh, when a line is perpendicular to one of the reference plane means automatically it will become parallel to the other plane. So, you have to by heart this rule and you have to apply these rules for the lines perpendicular to one of the reference planes. So you can understand this rule by doing an exercise. The question you can see in your screen right. The question is, a line MN of length 65 mm is perpendicular to HP. 
the point mp is 40 mm above hp and 20 mm in front of vp draw its projections two conditions are there if the first condition is n is nearer to hp or m is away from hp and the second condition is m is nearer to hp so we will read the question again a line m n of length 65 mm is perpendicular to hp so a line m n of length 65 mm so m n 65 is the true length of the line is perpendicular to hp so the line is perpendicular to hp now the point m is 40 mm above hp the point m is 40 mm above hp and 20 mm in front of me so the point m is 40 mm above hp and 20 mm in front of me draw its projections the first condition is n is nearer to hp n is nearer to hp or m is here or m is here from this so draw the xy line the line mn of length 65 mm is perpendicular to hp the line is perpendicular to hp so we know that when a line is perpendicular to hp its top view will be a point so the line mn what will be its top view mn its top view will be mn and the front view will be m dash n dash right so when a line is perpendicular to hp its the top view will be a point so m comma n will be a point and m dash n dash will be a line perpendicular to hp showing the point so we have draw the we have drawn the x y line we can look at the point m because the point m is given completely so m is 40 mm above so this is 40 mm and 20 mm in front of so this is 20 mm so the point m is located from it this is m dash and this is m this is 40 and this is 20 <coughs> now we know that uh, the line is perpendicular to hp so the line is perpendicular to hp means in the top view you can see the point the top view means m n so we have obtained m m that point will be the point m dash is it clear then what about the m dash n dash m dash n dash will be of length 65 mm <coughs> and perpendicular to x y line clear so m dash n dash will be of length 65 mm and that will be perpendicular to x y so how can we construct this m dash n dash that is the key thing in this question <coughs> how can we construct m dash n dash see we know that m dash n dash is 65 and dash will be perpendicular to x y but this m dash n dash can be located or n dash can be located at a distance of 65 in two ways because from this point at a distance of 65 in this direction we can obtain m dash sorry n dash and if we measure 65 in this direction then also we will get n dash is it clear n dash can be obtained at or located from m dash at a distance of 65 mm in two ways in this direction as well as in this direction if the position of n is given as position of n dash is given as below hp then we can obtain only this thing because below hp means n dash will be always below the x y if it is given that n is n should be above hp then we can have only in this direction since it is not given we can get either in this direction or in this direction listen we are taking n dash at a distance of 60 by mm from this direction uh, from this point in this direction so at a distance of 60 by mm we can get n dash now we can dimension it this is 40 this is 20 and this is the true length of the line m n that is 60 mm so what about the m i think see you can see that m is nearer as compared to n right m is nearer to hp as compared to n right because n is at a distance of 60 plus 40 105 height so in this case n is nearer 
sorry, n is error or n is given. We can do the same thing. At a distance of 40, we can locate m dash. At a distance of 20, we can locate n. Sorry, m. And we know that the line is perpendicular to HP. So the line is perpendicular to HP means in the top view you can see the point. So that point will be n itself. Now we are locating n dash. We can uh, locate n dash in this direction as well as in this, in this direction. We have located in this direction here. So in this case, we can locate in this manner. This is 40, 40 plus 20 is 60. So this will be our 65. So this is n dash. See, now what happens? This distance is 20. This distance is 40. And this distance is, so I mentioning this distance is 65. So, what about the points M and N? Point M is 40 away from x y line, but the point N is 20 away from x y line. Sorry, 25 away from x y line, right? So, here, so here you can see that the, the line M the line M is perpendicular to HP. Here, the point N is at a distance of 65 plus 40, 105 mm from the x y line or from HP and M is only at a distance of 40 mm from HP. This means the point M is near to HP or N is away from HP that is our question number B, part B in this question. Here you can see that the point M dash is at a distance of 40 and at a distance of 65 we have located N dash but we can see that at a distance of 40 plus uh, or this this distance is 65 this is 40 so this distance is only 25 so from this we can see that uh, clearly see that uh, the point n is nearer as compared to 2 because this distance is 40 and this distance is only 25 as the total distance is uh, uh, 65 so this distance is 25 this distance is 40 from this we can see that the n is nearer to HP compared to M. So here N is nearer or M is away that is our part A in our question. So I hope all of you have understood. In this question we have studied about a line which is perpendicular to HP and parallel to it. So when the since the line is the perpendicular to HP, it's the top view will be a point. It's the top view will be a point and the front view will show the true length and the parallel to uh, V2. <coughs> okay. Similarly, we can uh, solve problems where the line is perpendicular to VP and parallel to HP. So you have to understand the projection of lines which are parallel to both HP and VP and the projection of lines perpendicular to one of the reference planes and parallel to the other. Then only you will be able to understand the projection of lines inclined to one of the reference planes and uh, parallel to the other that we will see in our next video. So I hope all of you have understood this question and uh, if you are really liking my video please subscribe my channel also. So see you again with our next video.